Okay, I'm going to do a demonstration of these fishing boats. Now, I'm showing you the close-up of the drawing here because there's quite a bit of graphite on here. And uh, that's my reference photo, which I've uh, approximated. Uh, I'm using a bit of cobalt blue, just a touch of um, burnt sienna in it to kind of gray it down. This is dry paper now. And... Uh, Kind of a moppy squirrel hair. It's a mixture of squirrel hair and synthetic. Squirrel hair by itself is just cheap and nasty. And this area, I'm just showing you in the small shots, is where we're going to be doing a workshop in May. And uh, if you come, you won't have to do boats if you don't like boats. But if you do, there's a, a wealth of different kinds of boats. So I'll show you a few of those. Um, squirrel hair by itself is kind of cheap and floppy, and it, but it holds a lot of water. When it's mixed with synthetic, like this one is, just a bit of nylon uh, or something similar, it uh, gives it spring and comes bounces back. It's just a great. It holds a ton of wash. Although I'm not really flooding it in this particular case because. If I do, then it'll just run flat. I want to keep some kind of cloudy shapes here, really rough in the background. The boats are going to have so much detail on them that I don't really want to get a busy sky or an overdramatic sky. Just something interesting and uh, calm for the background. And that also will be, you know, set the stage for my reflections in the water in the foreground. And I say a 200 pound paper, just cold pressed, just taped down with masking tape. I don't think it's going to buckle too much. I didn't pre wet the papers because I wanted to uh, sort of keep control of those, those edges. Now I'm going to switch to a but a two inch synthetic brush. Oh, that's one of the other boats uh, in and around the area that we can use for reference. It's, it's just endless, the different subjects you've got here, but whether single boats by themselves, uh, at low tide or very simple ones, if you'd rather pick a, pick a simpler subject. As you can see, they can get pretty complicated. I don't really draw them with uh, the idea that I'm going to portray all the mechanical devices, I just use their their shapes as ideas, and I don't think uh, I don't think fishermen would be too thrilled with the fact that I don't give them uh, much technical detail here. It's an artistic license. We just draw shapes that kind of look like they're part of the boat. Well, I've added a little bit of uh, ultramarine to the bottom here, just so it goes a little bit darker. Trying to keep these strokes very horizontal. Otherwise, it makes the water look like it's going to pour out one edge. That boat is going to be a bit uh, it's going to look like it was once white. I don't want, none of these boats, these working boats, don't stay their sparkling new condition very long. So uh, I'm going to lighten the reflection area there. Yeah, that's dry now and ready to uh, start putting some of the detail on the boat. But I'm going to just do the horizon. There's, the ocean is out there on the other side of this wharf. So I use a bit of fallow blue on a round brush and just glide my thumb along the ruler just, uh, just to help get a straight line, sort of an assisted straight line. Back to cobalt blue and about a number 10 round brush. And I mix, just jump back and forth between blue and a bit of burnt sienna. You can put a little orange or anything in there just to get a variety and paint shapes that kind of run together 
I'm thinking in terms of silhouettes of all these shapes rather than what they actually are. Straight lines and squares and triangles and all kinds of geometry going on in here and a ver variety of colors. I just kind of take my time and let it run together. I'm not going to make you watch every little bit of this because I think once you get the idea, you'll be able to figure it out. I want a dark bit in here. This is all dry paper because I can, I can uh, put the darks in. And I keep referring back to my reference photo. It's this dark area in here. And keep a hard edge where I want a hard edge. Then I can feed another wash into the edge of that or soften it like this with a bit of lighter wash. And, uh, and then go in beside it with a brighter color. This is going to be too bright. I'm going to tone that down later. It's cadmium orange and a bit of cobalt blue. And it run together so I can keep a hard edge and soft edges going at the same time. dark brown stuff on the base of this. I'm going to put a little bit of the reflection in while I got this color. If you're interested in the, uh, in any of my workshops, just check my website. You can get the information you need to sign up. Very thin. This is the boat that uh, you know once was white, but we're going to add some color to it. Just but keep it very light. It's a little bit of blue and burnt sienna. Very pale. Lots of water, in other words. Let it kind of run together. It'll look, I'm hoping like it's a little worn and rusty bits. I don't know. Wood doesn't rust, I guess, but the stuff that goes into it, bolts and screws and things, I'm sure that gets rusty. Drips down. Cut around these uh, bumpers because I want that one red. Red shows up better on white paper than going over a color. Here again, gets kind of picky. It's just a matter of doing a lot of um, little geometric shapes that kind of fit together. And leave the wash sort of fresh. Don't, uh, don't go rubbing it too much. Let it, uh, tends to get overworked and worn out real quickly. So I'm doing like one touch patchwork in here. Now I'll scuff that up with a little bit of burnt sienna. It's a bit bright for, for an old iron side boat here. Put a bit of that color in the water while I'm here. It's a half inch flat brush which I like for a lot of the reflection work. Because I can work it side to side and get that sort of ripply effect or I can 
pull it straight down and get a more of a smear in the water. I, I add a bit of a violet to burnt sienna to get a really dark dark without ever using black. There's always some color in that dark, a little reddish look to it. I'm using violet and burnt sienna. It'll, it'll be a really, really dark reddish color rather than rather than a cold black. Like blues tend to make very cold black, look more like a, a burnt area on the paper than a, than a dark. I kind of wiggle this brush to get that rippled reflection look. And then think of this water as getting a little bit breezier as it gets towards the bottom. And I'll kind of dry brush it, these vertical strokes. Just to get, this, get it to smear a little in the water so it's different than the, than the actual boat itself. I'm kind of guessing it. The colors usually will be darker in the reflection than, than the object that they're reflecting. So there's a bit of guesswork going on there. Now I'm going to turn it sideways and use that ruler technique again with a liner brush this time, one of those long skinny riggers. And that'll help get my uh, these long shapes, poles, and rigging, and yeah. And I just put that wet stroke right where I'm on my ruler. So start at the top and work down if you, you want to avoid that. And there's another one here I want to put in. We can just guess at most of this stuff. It looks convincing. I'm going to use a, a little bigger brush. I'll use my number 10 again for that long pole here that leans out the back. All these things have a function, but for me, it's just a painting. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of guys on the back of this boat just to you know, put some life into the picture. It's not going to be much life because they're so small, but a little bit of blue shadow on that guy's shirt and a bit of yellow on this guy. A bit of shadow on the side of that bumper. Right. You can just spend all day poking around at this, but I like to just do you know, single strokes and just touch it. Try not to get carried away. You can values and color more than trying to render each little bit. It'll look plenty busy enough just with these simple strokes. Have to worry about what they are, even. It's like a thing that goes this way with a stuff that sticks out the end. That's about halfway. I'll do a, a little. Put some of these ripples in the in the water. I've done the rest of that rigging just the way I demonstrated. It. On the other two boats, touch that edge so it's not too harsh, and back with my half-inch flat brush, clean water, do the final touches. Just lift a little bit of light ripple out of the dark areas. Maybe even drag a bit of the dark into the light area. That just puts a bit of a surface on just the reflection, so that the Water looks flatter and a little blending here. It looks kind of rough. 
Aside from that, and that is about the end.